Hello, welcome back, Matt here. Today I have another film camera. We have the amazing Nikon F4. Let's take a look. So you'll be pleased to know if you saw my Nikon F5 video, I can link it below, that I won't be doing any of my acting in today's video. Today instead I'll try and give you a quick overview of the Nikon F5, why I enjoy it and then example photos. If you're a Nikon shooter you may be able to relate to this camera and if you're a regular Leica shooter that's accidentally stumbled on this video I will include photos to show that you don't really need a Leica to take nice pictures. I know everybody knows that but it's always nice to point it out now and again. So what can I tell you about the Nikon F4? As the name suggests, the Nikon F4 followed the Nikon F3 and was then replaced by the Nikon F5. So the Nikon F4 is a 35mm SLR single lens reflex film camera released in 1998 and was in production until 1996. In 1996 they released the mighty Nikon F5. See that video for full details on this beast. So because the Nikon F4 is quite an advanced camera, similar to the Nikon F5, I won't go through every single button like I do on my vintage 1950s film cameras because these have a lot of functions and as with the Nikon F5, I use, again, probably 1%, 2% of all the features. I shoot these cameras in manual mode and then I just make the most of the autofocus. With that said, what are some of the basic features? This camera has some weight to it, and I'll come on to the weight in a second, because it takes four AA batteries. The four AA batteries power the camera in the battery grip. There are actually three different versions of the Nikon F4. There's the standard Nikon F4, which is the smallest one, which takes four AA batteries. Then there's the Nikon F4S, which I believe takes six AA batteries. And then the Nikon F4E, which takes eight AA batteries. You can combine them depending on which battery grip you use. The MB20 is the smaller battery grip. The MB21 is the larger battery grip. So the advantage of the four AA batteries means we have autofocus, autofilm advance, autofilm rewind, and a maximum of 5.7 frames per second. As I made that a feature in the Nikon F5 video, I can do the same for you in this video. So I'm going to put the camera onto CH continuous high and that should give me the fastest we can fire the shutter. Okay, you ready? One, two, three, go. I'm never going to shoot that fast, but it does sound quite nice. I won't go through all the features, but on the front you have auto focus lock, auto exposure lock, your PC sync port, continuous, single and manual, and your lens release button here. If we look again on the top of the camera, this is more like a modern DSLR. So you have the standard PASM modes, program mode, shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual mode, as you can see here. And then again, you have the standard features that you see on most DSLR cameras, single shot, continuous high, continuous low, self timer. And then in terms of the shutter, you have shutter speeds from four seconds through to eight thousandth of a second and then a maximum flash sync speed of 1 over 250. 1 over 250 is quite useful if you like to shoot flash, as I sometimes do. In the center of the camera, you have your viewfinder. It is a big, bright viewfinder, 100% courage, 0.7 magnification. And if you can see, it's even got a built-in diopter and your light meter, where you can set it to spot, center-weighted, or matrix. And then on the other side, you have your manual film rewind crank and auto rewind button if you want to use auto and you have your ISO select button here. The viewfinders will come off, and there you have the screen underneath. Let's pop that back on. The back of the camera looks very clean, and you just have your film preview window. And on the base of the camera, you have your tripod socket and the grip where you load your four AA batteries. Film loading couldn't be easier, the same as most Nikon SLR cameras. You have the standard back door opening, Drop your film in, drag it across until you hit the red mark. Close the back, press your shutter, and if there was film in, it would, it would advance to the first frame. You can see that in the Nikon F5 video because it's more or less the same. So that's the basic spec of the Nikon F4 covered. And then the question is, why is this camera so special? Some of the Nikon fans may say this is special because it was the first camera to have full matrix metering and it was a sort of benchmark camera in the, the Nikon range where it was the first on many different items. The Nikon F4 is extremely rugged. I dropped it down the flight of stairs on a workshop in Zurich and to my absolute amazement both the camera and the lens survived. 
I'm going to show you a series of pictures in a moment so I can show you the lens which I use the most. I'll put it on to show you. I tend to use manual focus lenses on manual focus bodies and autofocus lenses on autofocus bodies because my thinking is what's the point of carrying the extra weight of the the AA batteries if you're just going to use a manual focus lens. So for example if you saw my video on the amazing Voigtlander lenses for Nikon mount, the SL lenses, I wouldn't bother using the Nikon F4 because it makes no sense to have the extra weight. I'd use something like a Nikon Fe2. This will take the same photos as the F4 if you're using manual focus lenses and it's a lot lighter. I'll come on to that in a second. So here is the lens that went down the flight of stairs. So you can see the, the damage that the rough concrete steps made. This is a Nikkor 60mm f2.8 lens. And in my mind, this is one of the best autofocus lenses for Nikon mount. I needed something decent to compete with the image quality I'm used to seeing with my Leica cameras and Leica lenses. So when I started using the Nikon F4 some years back, I tried to find the best lenses I could get for the Nikon and that seemed to be mostly macro lenses because macro lenses are sharper. So I used the 60mm macro lens on the F4, 55mm macro lens if you saw the sharpest 50mm lens video on the older Nikon bodies. This lens has really quick autofocus and super duper sharp. So when you see the photos, they're shot with this lens, most of them. Talking of lenses, this is a special camera if you enjoy using a range of lenses. I know some of you watching are Nikon F100 shooters, and again, I'll come to this in a second. The problem with the later cameras is they are not fully compatible with the whole range of Nikon lenses, meaning AI, AIS, D, G, VR, all the different lenses from kind of whenever they started, I think 1970s through till today. The Nikon F4 is special because it works with every lens and meters with every lens except the VR lenses. The VR lenses will fit and work, but the vibration reduction will not work. G lenses will work, but because the G lenses are the modern lenses, I should have brought one to show you with no aperture ring. You have to use shutter priority or program mode for G lenses, but they will work. If you use an older camera, these cameras cannot use G lenses because the G lenses have no aperture ring. If you use more modern bodies, you cannot meet with the older lenses. So the Nikon F4 is great because it does everything. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll know that I love my camera weights. So with that said, let me just compare the Nikon F4 to a few other similar bodies, which you may be aware of. First up, how much does the Nikon F4 weigh? This weighs 1.2 kilos with the batteries and it needs the batteries so you may as well weigh it with batteries. 1.2 kilos is the same as 42 ounces. If you compare that to the Nikon F5, this weighs 1.4 kilos or 49 ounces. But because of the nice grip and the, the larger size, they feel fairly similar, which is surprising. If the F4 is too heavy for you, you could look to get something like the Nikon F100. I still need to do a review on this, but I need to use it more. So this review is coming, feel free to subscribe if you're into your Nikon stuff. The Nikon F100 is a nice weight at only 785 grams, which is 28 ounces. If that's still too heavy for you, watch my Nikon F80 video. That camera is only 515 grams, 18 ounces, which is even less than a Nikon FM2, 540 grams for anybody that's interested. And again, if you're like a shooter, this is similar weights to a Leica M camera. And then if you still want a lighter camera, check out my Nikon FG20 video. That camera weighs an amazing 440 grams, which is 15.5 ounces. So if you go back to the Nikon F4, you can have one Nikon F4 or three Nikon FG20s in your bag for the same weight. So if you want to travel light for the day, this might not be your camera, but if you want a professional, reliable workhorse camera, this probably is your camera. This or the Nikon F5 of the two we are looking at here. One of the differences between the Nikon F4 and the later cameras, if we just look here against the Nikon F100, the F100 has the LCD display, the same as the Nikon F5, where the Nikon F4 on the top still has all the knobs and dials. So if you're someone that likes knobs and dials coming from older cameras, you may find the F4 more attractive to you than say the Nikon F5 or the Nikon F100 or any of the later models where they're more like using a DSLR in terms of you've got an LCD. So I quite like the tactile knobs and buttons of the 
the F4 for that reason. Just to give you an idea of how many features this camera has, the official Nikon manual has 109 pages. If you compare that to say my Leica 3 cameras from the 1930s to the 1950s, you don't need any manual for those cameras. And that's probably true for most of the 1950s cameras. Most of them you can pick them up and use them without any, any paperwork. With cameras as advanced as the Nikon F4, you may benefit from actually reading the manual to get the maximum out of this camera. So the question you may have is, how much do these cameras cost? We know that it's got a truckload of features, so it's gonna be expensive, surely. It's really well made, it's really solid, it kind of feels like it's built to last. It's got a nice grip, it feels kind of nice in the hand. It's gonna be expensive, right? Wrong. <laughs> these cameras cost roughly 210 pounds in the UK and roughly $200 in the US. Looking at eBay completed listings as at March, 2021. So 200 pounds, that's, that's crazy. That's really great value when you compare it to say, a, I don't know, Voigtlander Besser, and those cameras are now going for a thousand pounds. Yes, some of those are very desirable because some of them are like an M-mount, but even so, you could have five Nikon F4s, which you could probably throw at a brick wall and it'd still survive. Or one Besser where, if you look at it wrong, it might break. <laughs> no, that's not entirely fair. I do like my Bessers, the earlier Bessers, the R, the L, the T are quite plastic and lightweight, quite fragile feeling. The later models, things like the R2C, R3A and the R4N that I use are all magnesium body. But even so, this does feel so much stronger. So I just keep plugging all the different videos, but it's just an easy way to explain things. If you saw the Kia video, those are built like bricks. This feels like a brick, but much more solid than a Kia. And a Kia is quite a solid camera. So this is probably my most solid camera that I own, other than its big brother, the Nikon F5. So definitely really well made. And with that said, let's look at a few more photos. So these are portraits taken with the Nikon F4 camera, mostly overseas. Shot on various film stocks. During this time, I was shooting a lot of Kodak T-Max 400, Kodak T-Max 100. Um, as I say, the lens I was using quite a lot at that time was the Nikkor 60mm f2.8 micro. I was also using the Tekina 100mm f2.8 micro. So those are some portraits. I also used this body on a trip to San Francisco because it was lighter than my Nikon F5 and I wanted a autofocus body. I took it to San Francisco and used the 180mm f2.8 D lens and these are some of the example photos. If you want to see a full write-up on the Nikon F4 I'll put a link to the blog post below and you can see some of the images shared in full resolution if you check out that website. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and feel free to subscribe. I know most of you watching are not yet subscribed because YouTube tells me, so feel free to subscribe if you like these types of camera videos. Finally, as always, a massive thanks to my patrons and see you back here soon in the next video. Bye.